Templates can be found everywhere. That is the reason the light novels feel the same, sports shows play out in the exact same fashion, and harems have the obligatory bitch episode. This is what helps us categorize a series by genre or separate them by demographic. Did you notice how every time something unexpected happens in a show, almost everybody rushes to label it subversion or deconstruction? It's as if all it takes is to have a twist of any kind. If you cheapen the term so much, then you are left with only two types of shows, the ones that are predictable and the ones that are deconstructions. They're actually trying to make a canon Broly. Nobody wanted this! Shut the fuck up! It's subversion! Toriyama's always known for not giving people what they actually ask for! And yet predictable doesn't always mean average, in the same way deconstruction doesn't always mean great. Big Order was the definition of randomness, and Mayoiga was subverting the expectations of its own premise. There were twists and turns every five minutes, but were they enough to make them good series? The plebs will say yes, but then again they will say it for anything they have the feels for. I was fangasming, it's just the way it looked. There is subversion, and then there is this. Toriyama announces he's going to unveil a brand new Dragon Ball Z movie. But instead, he unzips his pants and just starts pissing all over the audience. Get it? It's subversion! You didn't see that coming! And walks off stage. And then the urine-soaked fans of the franchise stand there. That man is a genius. If you like Broly, then you're probably going to enjoy the fan service. A twist by itself means nothing, it's what you do with it. And what you can do with it is making it lead to something else. Meaning, a deconstruction of any formula needs to be eventually reconstructed into a different formula, with what we call subversion being the transition period. For example, One Punch Man is often called a deconstruction of superheroes, but the twist becomes apparent in the first five minutes and it doesn't lead anywhere at the end. That's why it's just a satire, and anyone who calls it anything more than that is a it's tasteless, tasteless casual. casual. For something to be called a deconstruction, Construction. Its genre in the beginning must be completely different from the genre it has at its ending. And even then, you don't always get a good show, especially when the new formula is worse than the formula it was reconstructed from. A notorious example is Zetsuo no Tempest, which begins as a metaphysical mystery and after a magical reset midway turns into a romantic comedy. The show as a whole is garbage, but everybody will agree that the first half is intriguing while the second one has nothing to remember it for. In contrast to that, School Days transitions from a forgettable rom-com into a most cathartic violent ending. You can argue that the twist came too late, but that is how a harem story ends realistically and it's unforgettable. Another way to tell if a deconstruction is done well is to see if it has a smooth transition phase. Madoka Magica, for example, is an awful deconstruction, because the subversion happens instantly on episode 3 and is undone just as quickly with the magical reset at the final episode. Neon Genesis, on the other hand, is a great deconstruction, since the characters become gradually more unstable and even when they are given the chance to magically reset everything in the last episode, they refuse. And the last way to tell if a deconstruction is done well is a clear and permanent difference in tone once the transition is over. One Piece, for example, has a very dramatic tone during the Marine Ford battle, but as soon as that arc was over, the tone went back to the usual stuff. That is not a deconstruction because the subversion did not have lasting effects. The slow transition of the original Dragon Ball, on the other hand, from a comical adventure into a fighting shonen counts as a deconstruction even if it lasted hundreds of episodes. And if some wonder how can this be true when it's considered to be the series that established the generic fighting shonen formula everybody's copying thereafter, it's because you're thinking of Dragon Ball Z, which does not count as a deconstruction, since by the time it began, the transition in the original formula was over. And now that we established what a deconstruction is, let's clarify why so many people use it out of context. Mostly because they are stupid, but it's also because they misplace it with novelty. In their minds, a deconstruction can only be something that has never been done before, which is a pretty dumb thing to believe, since nothing can be considered completely original and revolutionary. Hitman Reborn is also a series that began as a comedy and then turned into a fighting shonen. It is a deconstruction, even if Dragon Ball did it before. And it's also not a good deconstruction, because the writing is awful. Everything derives from something else that came before it, either as inspiration or as direct tribute. The first time we encounter or think about something is never the first time something popped into existence, at least not not entirely, and what is original for one person can easily be derivative for another more experienced person. What I mean is that a deconstruction is a fact and not a subjective impression. It is what it is and not your opinion of it being one. 
As I said, even if a show is a deconstruction, it does not necessarily mean it is good. It just makes it more compelling because you're not getting the same thing throughout its duration. If there is a season with 40 series and only one of them changes along the way, it will be standing out and it will be far more memorable. Aside from that, novelty doesn't mean anything by itself. It only works in comparison to other series and it doesn't necessarily make things more engaging if you are watching a dozen deconstructions at the same time. Cabaneri looking way too similar with Attack on Titan. It has the same director and it is animated by the same studio, but it's otherwise not based on any work by the guy who made the Attack on Titan manga. It's a weird situation where it is not an adaptation, yet calling it an original project is a stretch. I know that down to it they are both following the same template which was not established by Attack on Titan. The same template was used in Blue Gender, for example, which is way older, and if we count movies, there was also Soil and Green from which the twist of what the origin of the monsters is originated from. Finally, let it be known that it is a term which gets misused consciously, even by those who know all that. It sounds unimportant when we say that we like something because we hadn't experienced it before. That's not much of a justification to excuse why we consider a show to be amazing. On the other hand, it sounds much better when we make it sound like it's something universally profound and thought-provoking, even when it's not that special for large crowds, as it is for certain individuals.